Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at my Ernie Ball Music Man Cutlass. Let's do this. This is my Music Man Cutlass. One of my favorite P-Bases ever. I call it a P-Base because it has the split coil pickup and basically has the same formula as a P-Base even though it's completely different. Anyways, this is one of my favorite bases and it has a very interesting and short history. First launching in 2016 as part of Ernie Ball's Modern Classics lineup, this is one of two bases that was part of that initial launch. Uh, this is the Cutlass, which is the second base to share that name. I'll talk more about that in just a second. And then there was the Caprice, which had a smaller body, more akin to that of a USA Sterling, and it had a PJ configuration with a single coil, that had hump canceling, pick up in the bridge position. So you had a split coil and a single coil in a smaller body. Uh, same basic finish options between both bases and uh, just a very interesting pair. It was also Music Man's first foray into passive bases, especially passive bases that uh, look like this, but it would not be their last. However, these bases were discontinued in 2019 due to lackluster sales. I think one could only attribute that to the price tag versus something like a Fender P. You had no real reason to spend uh, the extra $500, $600 on uh, this Music Man unless you really wanted it. Once these were discontinued, prices for these did not drop. There was an initial period where you could purchase these for next to nothing around, I want to say, eleven or $1,200 on the higher end. Uh, but since then, prices have increased dramatically to the uh, high $1,000 to low mid $2,000 mark. These bases and their sister bases, the Caprice, are very hard to find relative to something like a Stingray. Um, but these are very, very special instruments. Now on to the name real quick. Its sister base, the Caprice, I believe is the first of its name, but the Cutlass is actually the third Cutlass base made by Ernie Ball Music Man. You had the Cutlass 1 and Cutlass 2, and the Cutlass Supreme! No, just kidding, there is no Cutlass Supreme. The Cutlass 1 and Cutlass 2, which were carbon fiber necked instruments that were basically stingrays and sabers. Uh, you had the single pickup Stingray and the double pickup Sabre, but I believe the necks for the Cutlass and Cutlass 2 were made by Modulus uh, back in the 80s there. Correct me if I'm wrong. However, this base is not any way associated with that base. On to the specs. The Cutlass has an alder body as opposed to an ash body that's usually found in something like a Stingray. And that is paired to a maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard here. You also had a maple fingerboard available with certain finish options, but that is not available with the Sunburst here. For the pick guard, we have a really nice tort and this split coil pickup here, which is a large pole piece pickup. Instead of having two poles per string, we have one giant pole. And boy, does this thing bark. The controls are your basic P bass controls. You have a volume and a tone, that's it. The rest is up to you and how you play, and you can play this a lot of different ways. For the hardware, I believe we have the first uh, iteration of the Stingray Special Bridge here. This only has three screws versus the uh, larger Stingray Bridge of 2017 and before. Uh, this is a very similar bridge to that of uh, Pinky back here. <laughs> Yep, so uh, very interesting there. And up at the headstock, we have some uh, shallower tuners. These have a much smaller footprint versus the larger uh, Stingray tuners of the pre-special Stingrays. So overall, a very nice instrument. Now let's go ahead and turn it around real quick. Around back, we see this gorgeous sunburst and nothing else. Fully passive bass from Music Man. And at the neck heel, we see a really nice five screw neck attachment with a contoured neck heel, making upper fret access very easy and very pleasant. We also see the back of the neck here, which has a very smooth and very light polyurethane finish. Most of the higher end USA Music Men, especially the Sterlings, have a uh, oil and wax finish on the back of the neck. 
this, however, is a poly and has no need to be, you know, reapplied. Though I guess some people may decide to sand that and do the uh, USA Music Man route. This bass is completely stock. In regards to weight, the Music Man cutlass that we see here comes in at nine pounds on the dot. A very average weight. I mean, it's not the lightest bass in the world, but it's far from being the heaviest. Overall, very comfortable, and it's a well-balanced instrument too. And again, price, uh, they're not really made anymore. They were discontinued in, I believe, 2019. So the used market isn't the kindest right now. <laughs> If you're really interested in getting one of these bases, then I recommend snagging one while you can because they're rather hard to find. And I know you guys are wondering, what does this bass sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. I absolutely adore it. It is just, it feels old. It feels like an old, like, worn-in, comfortable instrument that you've had for a while. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, just like that Gibson uh, Les Paul Jr. tribute that I have, it just feels like an old friend, and it really, really can bark. The controls are simple, but the tone is in your hands here. You can play this many different ways. You can be, you know, really subtle and get a nice fat tone. Like or you can dig in and get some bite. This is a great bass. Now, I have to admit, the strings that are on this bass are the same strings that came with it. On that five-way P bass review, I changed all the strings on all those basses. I totally forgot to change them on this, and then uh, when editing, I didn't even notice, and then I looked at the bottoms of the strings and they didn't match the same as the, uh, they didn't match the MJCs. <laughs> But I'm like, damn, this sounds good. And they've the, they're the same strings that have been on there for a year, but I just think they sound really good. I may change them at some point, but they have some uh, real funk to them. <laughs> I have no idea what they are either. So anyways, we have a split coil pickup and a volume and tone control. Uh, what you've heard was with the tone at 100%. Let's play a little bit more with that, and then we'll turn that down. take the tone down to about 50% here. Just like any other USA Music Man, the actuation of the controls is just mwah, so smooth. When you turn the knobs, it's just like, mm. it's, it's It has a little bit of resistance, but like, it, it feels like you're turning a knob through like some molasses or something, but it feels like premium. It feels mm, good. Anyways, 50%, I gotta find it. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> now let's turn the tone back up and I'm going to use a pick. Now I normally use like a felt pick and stuff, but I've been using a regular pick uh, a little bit more now. So let's see what it sounds like with a regular pick. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take the tone back to all the way down and play with the pick again. <laughs> I'll put the pick away now, take the tone back up, and let's do some slapping. <laughs> This is a slapper, I mean. It's a music man. Music men can slap. This is a fun bass. And again, this is the these are the same strings that have been on here since like when I bought it. So I don't think they were new when I bought it either. Uh, yeah. But here we have it. So last thing we're going to do is throw some drums behind this bass. <laughs> So here are my final thoughts on the Ernie Ball Music Man Modern Classic Cutlass. 
I love this bass. This is an absolute masterpiece out of Ernie Ball Music Man. They took an existing formula and added a real interesting twist to it, a Music Man twist. Keep in mind that this bass has absolutely zero affiliation with Leo Fender, unlike their biggest selling product, which is the Stingray, Leo Fender's uh, second baby, I believe. So... <laughs> This is a uh, this is a very interesting bass and a very interesting take on a modern P bass. Would I recommend getting one? Yes, if you can get your hands on one, especially if you can get a deal on one, absolutely snag one of these up and you won't be disappointed. They're getting rarer and rarer by the minute. And again, I have no affiliation with Music Man. They don't even make these anymore, so you have to rely on the secondhand market. I don't make any money off of you guys buying them. I just want to make sure that you guys have good bases in your houses <laughs> or apartments or wherever you live in your dwellings uh this is a great base the specs the tones everything about it screams high quality so there you have it this is my in-depth video on the ernie ball music man cutlass a base that has gone too soon from the music man lineup and i do wish they would introduce them because they're awesome basses that maybe deserve a little bit of a refresh with some of the modern tuners and maybe some newer colors. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think about my Ernie Ball Music Man a Modern Classic Cutlass. Cutlass Supreme! It's not a Supreme. And as always, until we groove again.